And good morning, everybody. How you doing? It's good to see everybody here. Guess we're going to be getting a change in the weather. So uh, if you like the heat, like me, I'm sorry. If you like the cool weather that's going to be coming in after the rain tomorrow, happy for you. But you know what? It's all good in God's hands. Amen? Amen. It's good to see everybody here. Let's stand up as we open up this morning's worship service. We're going to be singing about our God. Our God is greater, 
Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Oh, awesome in power, our God. Our God. Into the darkness we shine. Father, your word tells us that where two or more are gathered together, that you are with them. Father, allow us to feel your presence here today, Lord, and to truly know that when God is with us, there is nothing that can stand against us. Father, in the year of 2020, there's been so many trials and, and so many situations where we just feel like everything is just caving in around us. Lord, help us to realize that it's not the world caving in, but that it's you holding us just a little bit closer. You holding us just a little bit tighter and letting us know that you are there with us. Father, as we continue in this study on finding out just exactly who you are, I pray for Pastor Tim as he brings your word. Father, I pray for anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon him as he gives us the message that you've given to him. Father, and I pray right now that you would bind Satan and that you would cast him out from this place, that he would have no influence here or in the lives and families that are represented here today. 
Father, this past week we've had a chance to reflect on things to be thankful for. Lord, help us to remember to be thankful for your son Jesus each and every day and the sacrifice that he made for us. Father, we humbly come before you this morning. We just praise you and worship you and honor you. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning, everyone. Let me start off this morning, uh, in addition to welcoming you and to welcoming those online, to ask you a question. Um, have you ever had one of those days? Yeah. Uh, I, and in fact, I think, uh, I think I even heard from those online, I think I heard the answer to that absolutely. Well, you can tell by the blank screens that today is one of those days. We are working on technology and um, prayerfully by the sermon, sorry Pastor Jay, by the sermon we may have it up and running hopefully hopefully a little sooner than there than that, but um, if you don't have the lyrics or we don't have the outline, just follow along and let God work because here's what I've learned in my life is that it is easy to be thankful and it's easy to give praise when things are going great. I mean, that's when it is really easy. The proof is in the pudding when things are not going great, that you're still able to give praise and give thanks. And that's what we're here today to do. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for about 10 months now as we uh, do a complete live stream. And we continue to learn things and we continue to adjust. And as those of you that may or may not be Bucks fans, back in the day we used to say about the Bucks defense, they bend but they don't break. And so that's what we're doing today. We're bending and being flexible. Um, I want to say thank you once again to everybody who came out last Sunday for our outdoor Thanksgiving uh, worship gathering. It was awesome. And I uh, just want to remind you that we do plan on doing that again um, in just a couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks, two weeks from today, December the 13th is our March to the Manger um, worship gathering. You'll be seeing more information about that in your newsletter. Um, you should be receiving that this week for December. We are going to mail them all out, so be in, on the lookout for your newsletter um, for December. And we're going to have our annual March to the Manger outside in the courtyard. So please be, um, be preparing for that. And, and as a little added bonus for that day, you know, I don't know about you guys, but there is something that we have just been missing over the past 10 months, and that is something called fellowship with other believers. And so we're going to try something. I've talked to uh, Miss Liz and Miss Susan and our hospitality team, right, Lisa? And uh, we are going to have... I, well, you're the only one here I can lean on. So um, we're going... After the... Uh, March to the Manger gathering, we are going to do an outdoor lunch. We're going to line up tables on the sidewalk. We're going to have a pre-packed meal, so there'll be no serving or anything like that. The uh, sanitized and clean hospitality team will have it all prepared, and we're just going to line up out there on the sidewalk and have a, a time of fellowship so make your plans for that. Come and join us. I think, I think we've all been missing that. Thank you. That's right. We, we, we need that. So, so make your plans for that. Um, I think it's going, to be, it's going to be a good time. And we are, just many of you have asked me, we are still planning on doing our Christmas Eve worship gathering um, at 530 on Christmas Eve. So uh, be prepared for that. And uh, Pastor Jay and Lisa are going to do their annual open house okay and uh we're we're going to you'll see in the newsletter that we're limiting it just to church members so um we'll let you know more information about that but um lisa said to me try to stop me from having it <laughs> try to stop me and so uh, we're looking forward to that um so we're glad you're here today it's wonderful to be in god's house and wonder to, wonderful to have everybody joining us online. We pray that you had a uh, blessed Thanksgiving, whatever that looked like um, for you. And uh, I know for us, it was an extremely quiet Thanksgiving, but it was, it was neat. 
and uh, so we just are glad that you've, you've chosen to worship with us today. Um, let's stand together, those of you that are with us, and follow along with the praise team as they sing Living Hope. Pastor Jay. You know, one day when we all get to heaven, we're not going to need any lyrics on the screens or anything like that. Uh, we're going to know it, and we're going to be praising God the entire time. So, Pastor Tim, you can get your time in now. Because when we all get to heaven, there's not going to be any preaching. It's all going to be worshiping. So um, what, what can I say? Try to stop, <laughs> Try to stop you. <laughs> so we're going to sing right now about God being our living hope. And it, it, it's true. As, as we you know, start to wind down 2020, it was hard. And it still is hard to think that things are going to get better. But God's word tells us that they are. God's word promises that this is just a short time, just the blink of an eye. So things are going to get better. You know, this, this may be a new normal or there may be another new normal. But God's going to take care of his people and he's here with us now. So let's sing about God being our living hope. Oh. 
red the grave has no claim on me. Sing that again. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body Jesus Christ has broken every chain. There's nothing here on earth that will bind us out of His grip and out of His grace and out of His mercy. He has broken every single chain. That's something to be thankful for. Amen. Pastor Tim. service man let me hold that for you <laughs> you might want to help me up one and i don't know <laughs> all right for our focus prayer time this morning uh are you sick of hearing all of the 2020 metaphors i mean when we started in january and we knew 2020 and 2020 vision and all that stuff i mean i don't know how many churches i know that they're they're uh, their theme for this year was 2020 vision. I don't think we ever want to see a 2020 again. I mean, if by some chance God healed me and I went to the eye doctor and he said, your eyesight's 2020 once again, I'd be like, please, not 2020, 2021, 2019, something. Um, but one thing has, has remained the same, and that is the expectation and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Nothing that goes on in the world, no, no war, no pandemic, no election, no um, uh, disasters of any kind can, can stop the expectation and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And today, Sunday, November the 29th, is what we know as the first Sunday of Advent. Now, for those of you that are not aware of what Advent means, Advent simply means to be expecting something, to look in expectation of something. And when we talk about the Advent season in the church, what we are referring to is the expectation of the birth of Christ. The expectation that everything that was foretold, everything that took place in the Old Testament, was forward-looking and was looking for something, the hope of something. And that is the hope that the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, would one day come. And so as we look forward to 
the birth of Christ at this time of year, we need to remember that that is the fulfillment of everything that was foretold. And what I want us to pray about this morning is this, that that truth this year, this season, will mean more to us than it ever has at any time in our lifetime. That this year, the, the promise of the Messiah, the fulfillment of the prophecy, would mean more in 2020. Let's just pretend for a moment. Corey, I know you're supposed to be praying, but I'm kind of preaching, but that's all right, you know. Um, let's pretend that the first 11 months, for many people, defines 2020. But let's just pretend that by some miracle of God, his people don't look at January through November to define 2020. Let's look at December to define 2020. And let's look at that to define it because of the expectation of the Messiah. Let's look at it to say, you know what, no matter what has happened in January, February, and all the way through November of this year, it cannot compare to the expectation that we have as believers of what Jesus came to do for us. We, as sinners, were separated from God. And I don't know if you follow my daily scripture on email and on social media, but this the past few days we have I've been posting 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And that passage is all about what we're talking about today. It's all about one word. Reconciliation. Have you ever had a friendship or a relationship that was broken and then miraculously it was reconciled? Well, that's what God did for us. That's what Jesus did for us. We were separated from God, and according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Jesus Christ, in his miraculous coming, provided the way for us to be reconciled to God. That is something to define your year by. Don't let the events of 2020 define you. Let the event, the event, the birth of our Savior define you. Thanksgiving was later this year in November. So there's less time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like I told you last week, I was in a store and a kid was asking his mom for something and his mom said, no, Christmas is only four weeks away. Well, guess what? It's even less now. But let us this year hold on to the Advent season like never before because Jesus has come. Corey, come let the Lord lead you as you lead us in prayer talking about the Advent season. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Lord, we uh, humbly say thank you for uh, bringing us here into your house and uh, online to hear your message again, Lord. Um, as Pastor Tim said, we're getting into the Advent season, the, the Christmas season, Lord. Um, and this year, it's, it's very different from many other years. You know, it's definitely not uh, what a lot of us are used to, a lot of us uh, expected when we thought about uh, the Christmas season. But Lord, help us to remember that this year, no matter what, like, that you've put us in this situation for a reason, Lord, that there's been a purpose to all of this, Lord. Um, and, you know, I was kind of thinking about this earlier this week, and, you know, it just made me think, you know, that it's just more so sh you showing us that things of this world are fleeting. You know, jobs are fleeting. Money is fleeting. Material things are fleeting. Unfortunately, health is fleeting, Lord. But there is one thing that's eternal, and that's the love salvation that you provide through us 
or to us through your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. And as we recognize on December 25th, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, I just pray that each and every one of us not get caught up in the material, the commercialization um, of Christmas, Lord, that we, that we remember what this time truly means for us as Christ followers, Lord, as, as believers, that you are the one true king, that you are God, Lord. Um, I just pray that each of us um, take the time to, to remember all that we've got, Lord, because, again, as I've said before, if, if we're still here, Lord, if we're still breathing, we've got something to be thankful for. We are still blessed, Lord, that no matter how tough this year has been, no matter what it, the rest of this year has for us in store, we always still have the love, birth, and salvation of Jesus Christ to be thankful for, Lord. So I just pray that each and every one of us take that time to dig deeper into our faith this time and not just be worried about, you know, stuff like uh, candy canes and Christmas trees and gifts and stuff like that. You know, that, that stuff is cool and it's, it's, it's nice to do and it's, it's, it's a fun thing um, to kind of take our mind off of everything else that's going on. But Lord, help us to truly use you, your word, and again, to just birth and salvation that you provide to us um, as the thing that truly is going to take our mind off of that because lord we know that we have nothing without you and we have just we've got so much still to be thankful for and lord i just pray that each and every one of us just remember this time remember this season remember what it really is for lord this year especially as pastor tim said none of us expected it to go down like this none of us you know when we thought about 2020 um thought that the end of this year would would look like it has and we would be in the situation that we are. But Lord, we know again that you have a plan, that that plan is perfect and that it's not for us to know what you have in store for us, but it's for us to have faith in you, have that belief in you and put our full intentional trust in you as our Amen. Lord and Savior. Amen. So I just pray that each and every one of us cling to that, cling to each other and just look for opportunities to serve you and serve one another, Lord, because again, that going into this holiday season, uh, it's a time uh, of, especially this year, it could be a time of, uh, you know, struggle for some people, a time for people to uh, be remember, uh, be reminded of those that they've lost and things that they've lost. But, Lord, help us to be just refueled and reignited by your love, your mercy, and help us to rally around one another and rally around the faith and love that you provide to us. Thank you for everything we have, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Corey. Well, we are in part six of our series, The God Who Is. So far, we have looked at many of the different characteristics and um, attributes, if you will, of God. We have looked at His goodness, His holiness, His faithfulness. And last week, we looked at his patience. We've also looked at the graciousness of God, the grace of God. And if you recall, I defined the grace of God like this. It is the unmerited divine assistance that we get to be a part of. The unmerited, we couldn't do anything for it, divine from God help that we all need. Now, the reason I focused on grace for a minute, because we're going to talk about a different attribute, is that the, the attribute we're talking about today and grace often go together. But we need to understand an incredible distinction between the two. Grace is unmerited div divine assistance. Today, in part six, we are going to look at the mercy of God. So grace and mercy, you often hear them used in the same sentences. You often hear them used in prayers. God, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. And, and sometimes we, we mistakenly think that they are synonymous, grace and mercy. But I want to share with you to begin with this morning the difference in the two because there is a distinct difference and something that we need to grab hold of. So grace is unmerited divine assistance. We get something from God that we don't deserve. 
We get some help from him that we don't deserve. Mercy, on the other hand, is us not getting what we do deserve. So grace is getting something we don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. And you say, well, Tim, what do I deserve? Well, according to Scripture, we all, because of our sinful nature, deserve a pretty, pretty terrible ending. That's what we actually deserve. What we get is grace, and that is something that we don't deserve. So we're going to talk this morning about the mercy of God, and I want to kick us off by looking at the book of Lamentations in the Old Testament, chapter 3, a very famous passage of Scripture, verses 22 and 23 says this, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. This next part is key. His mercies never cease. His mercies begin afresh each morning. So I want you to hold on to this as we think about not getting what we deserve. And that is the fact that every morning we have a promise from God. And that promise is that just as the sun rises every morning, His mercies are new. And no matter what has happened the day before, the week before, the month before, the 11 months before, no matter what's happened, we have a promise from God that His mercies, His mercy is new every morning. And that's something that we need to hold on to and we need to remember. Father, we thank you for your mercy. And we come to you this morning as we open up your word and dive into scripture. Father, would you just speak to us? Let the words just be so much more than just words on a page. Help us, Father, to understand how great your mercy is. And how we totally deserve one thing. But you have said because of what Jesus did for us, we don't get that. We are spared from it. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, as I thought about where to go to talk about mercy, my mind automatically went to a story in the Old Testament. And most of us who have grown up in the church will know this story because we were taught this story in Sunday school. We, we know the story because it is often viewed as a children's story. But I want to share with you this morning the story of Jonah because the story of Jonah is so much more than just a children's story. I mean, we tell it to children because children just get captivated with the idea of a guy being swallowed by a fish. But more than that, they really get captivated when the Bible says that the fish vomited him out onto the shore. I mean, they just kind of like that, you know. You know, you know how kids are. If it's if it's if it's vomit or bathroom talk or anything like that, they you got them. All you got to do is tell them a story like that. And uh, in fact, I think as even as they get older, they still like that stuff. But that's that's another story. So um, so the story of Jonah. Jonah was a prophet, and he was a follower of God. And God said to him, Jonah, there are these people in this country called Nineveh, and they are sinning, they have turned from me, and I want you to go to Nineveh to preach to them. And Jonah basically said, that's nice that you want me to do that, God, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I think is best because, as many of us think, we do know better than God, right? And so Jonah did not go to Nineveh initially. In fact, the Bible tells us that he got on a boat and went the opposite direction. And 
God said, all right, that's the way you're going to be. I'm going to show you who I am. And, and a storm came up, and Jonah ends up realizing that it was his fault. They throw him overboard. He gets swallowed by the great fish. Don't need to go all theological on you, but the Bible never says it was a whale. We just kind of picked that up, you know. But it was a large fish of some sort, large enough to hold the body of a, of a man for three days. Well, Tim, come on now. You don't expect us to believe that just because the Bible says that God had this fish swallow Jonah, that that's really what happened. Well, yes, that is what I expect you to believe. And if you say, well, that's not possible. It's not, it's not possible for that to happen. Okay, well, let's not debate that for a minute. All right, we can debate that if you want. I want to debate something else with you. And that is this. Do you believe that God rose Jesus from the dead? Yes. Okay, so you believe that, that God took Jesus Christ, who was crucified, died, buried for three days in a tomb, and God breathed life back into him, and he walked out of that grave. We believe that as Christians. That is the core of what we believe. Now, do you still want to argue with me over whether God can have a fish swallow a man for three days? What's more important? See, my, my argument is, if you believe that Jesus was resurrected from the dead, then you shouldn't have any problem believing that a fish could swallow a man for three days. What's more difficult? So, the fish swallows Jonah. He's in the belly of the fish for three days. Finally, he causes the fish to have some stomach problems, and the fish vomits him up onto the shore. And Jonah says, okay, God, I get it, I got it, I got it. I'll go to Nineveh. And Jonah preaches, and the people of Nineveh repent. And Jonah says, I told you, God, I told you you were going to do this. See, Jonah didn't like what God's plan was. And yet God had a plan, a redemption plan, a plan of mercy for the people of Nineveh, but also a plan of mercy for Jonah. So our text this morning is the book of Jonah, which is an entire book about redemption and about reconciliation. And I want us to look at Several things that God shows mercy to us just as he showed Jonah, even when we don't deserve it. Okay, so if you're taking notes, we're going to start in Jonah chapter 1. And the first thing we see is that God shows us mercy even when we doubt. Even when we doubt. So my question for you is, do you doubt God? Have you ever doubted God? And if you say, no, I haven't, well, then we need to talk about another topic, and that's lying. Be because the fact of the matter is, we all doubt, and we all doubt God. Look at Jonah chapter 1, verse 3, part A. We're just going to look at two words. But Jonah. Now, how many times does that describe you or me. We know God wants us to do something, and we in our minds are like, but Tim can't do that. But Tim's not equipped to do that. But God would never ask Tim to go do that. And so God shows us mercy even when we doubt, even when we doubt whatever it is he's telling us to do. So, those of you that have known me for a while, um, in fact, somebody asked me the other day how long my family and I have been at West Shore, and I had to realize that next year, 2021, will be 25 years that we have been here at West Shore. 
Now, the first seven of that was as associate pastor and youth pastor, and the past 18 has been as your, your uh, lead pastor. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking back to the days when uh, I would only preach when the pastor was on vacation. And then back then, we, we, would, we still had a Sunday evening service, and the uh, pastor and myself would rotate every other Sunday night preaching. And Karen and I were still leading the youth at that time, and we would have youth service, youth gathering at 5.30, the church at 6.30. Well, on my Sundays to preach, from 5.30 to 6.30, so you could, I could usually be found out in the parking lot playing basketball with, with the youth. So most of the time when I came in at 6.30 to preach on those Sunday nights, I was dripping with sweat. Not like the sweat that I am dripping after I get done preaching now on Sunday morning, but I mean I was literally dripping with sweat. And I, I was just thinking about those days because um, I used to think to myself, I cannot see myself preaching every single Sunday. I would think, you know, it's difficult enough for me to come up with something to preach when somebody's on vacation or every other week on Sunday night. And, and I truly doubted that God had equipped me to do that. And now, I can't imagine doing anything else. So God had mercy on me, even though I doubted his call on my life. Jonah received mercy from God, even though from the very beginning, we see Jonah starting on the wrong foot. From the very beginning, when God said, I want you to go preach, we see, but Jonah, but Jonah, he doubted. God's plan for his life. And here is the key, is that I think if we look at Jonah, you know what we see? We see ourselves in him. And yet God shows us mercy even though we doubt his plan. My guess is that many people in 2020, are doubting that God is in control. But folks, I am here to tell you, it doesn't matter if it's 2020, 1940, 1850, 1776, we can keep on going. It doesn't matter whether we doubt if God is in control. He is still in control. He is still in control no matter what we think. And so God shows us mercy even when we doubt him. The second thing we see in this story from Jonah is that God shows us mercy even when we disobey. Even when we disobey. So right after we see those words, but Jonah, we see these words. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Let's stop there just for a minute. I want you to picture this. This is a prophet of God that God has put his hand on, and God says, I want you to go do this. And Jonah doubts, says, but Jonah. And then what does he do? He disobeys, and he doesn't just mildly disobey. He says, here's the deal, God. I don't want to do that, and this is how much I don't want to do it. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to run from God. Have you learned in your life you can't run from God? God knows where you are. He knows where you're going. And he absolutely won't let you get away from him. Let's continue. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. So God said, I want you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, I ain't going to do it. And I'm going to run from you. I'm going to buy a ticket. And I'm going to get on this boat. And I'm going to hide in this boat. And I'm going to go to Tarshish. And God's never going to be able to find me. 
Now that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? That sounds absolutely ridiculous. But you know, I think that we do that a lot too. We think we can run and we can hide from God. And God says, you can't run. Well, you can run, but you're not going to hide. See, God's got this little GPS on us. Did you know that? He knows exactly where we are every minute of every day. And the scary part about it is he knows every thought. He knows every idle word. And so Jonah said, well, I'm going to just rebel, and I'm going to disobey God, and I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Not only did he say no, he did the opposite. Now, I want you to think about the mindset of God, especially if you've got children, or you have had children, or you hope to one day have children you will know that there are times that you tell them to do things and they don't just say no. They say no and they go and do the exact opposite. Can anybody testify with that with me this morning? They do exactly the opposite. That's what Jonah did. And what did God have for Jonah? He had mercy. We read this story and we think, well, why did God even mess with Jonah? Surely there was somebody else out there God could have used. And there probably was. But God had his hand on Jonah. He wanted Jonah to be used. And even though he got up and went in the opposite direction and did the opposite of what God told him to do, it shows us the incredible mercy that God has for us when we disobey him, when we doubt him. He gives us chance after chance after chance because he knows what is best for us. So we see that Jonah doubted and still had mercy. Jonah disobeyed and God still showed him mercy. And the next thing we see is that God shows us and Jonah mercy even when we don't deserve it. Even when we don't deserve it. As I thought about how to share the mercy of God, and as Jonah kept coming to my mind, I, I really started to think, is there any better description of somebody who did not deserve mercy? Now, there's plenty in the New Testament. We see that Peter received mercy, and he probably didn't deserve it. But just think about how blatant what Jonah did. At least Peter... If you read through the scripture, Peter wanted to do the right thing. In fact, he said to Jesus, I will not deny that I know you. I will not deny you. And yet he did it. Jonah had no qualms about it. From the very beginning, he said, this is not going to happen, God. I do not want to go and preach to those evil, rotten people in Nineveh. And he didn't. And he did not deserve the mercy that God gave him. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 of Jonah says this. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. So this is after he's been thrown overboard. The fish has swallowed him. And, and Jonah said this. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Here's what I thought as I read the story again. And by the way, you know, there's, there's something to be said for going back to Scripture and reading a story that you have read a thousand times for reading a story that you think you know everything about, there, this is the power of the Word of God. That you can go to the Word of God and read something that you have read over and over and over again. Maybe you've been taught it as a child. Maybe you have even taught it yourself. There is something to be said about going back to the Word of God. And when I went to this, back to this story, here's what came to my mind. Man, Jonah should have been counted out. 
Jonah disobeyed and defied and doubted God and went in the other direction. God should have just wiped his hands of Jonah and said enough. He should have said, you know what, I'm just going to let that fish digest Jonah. Instead of vomiting him out on the, the seashore and allowing something new to take place. You see, even in the middle of Jonah defying God, God saw the potential in Jonah's life. So what does that mean for us? It means that even when we doubt, even when we disobey, even when we don't deserve it, God sees something in you and he sees something in me. And he shows us mercy. He doesn't give us what we deserve. What he does give us is another chance. Another chance. His rebellion and his disobedience should have been enough to say, Jonah, just, just go. Just go. I don't want anything more to do with you. That's what we would say, right? How many times have we, in relationship with other people, have just said, well, I've done everything I can. I'm just going to write them off. I'm just going to write them off. That's what we do, right? We just said, I don't have time. Life is too short. I'm not going to waste my time with you anymore. That would have been easy for God to do. But God didn't do that. And God does not do that with us. He shows us his mercy and he allows us chance after chance after chance. So we see that God shows us mercy when we doubt, when we disobey, when we don't deserve it. And finally, God shows us mercy even when we disagree. Now, I want, want to ask you, have you ever disagreed with God? Yeah. I want you to know that that is one of the most dangerous things you can do in your life, is disagree with God. But we do it because we think we know better. We think we know better. So what happens in Jonah's story, as we move to Jonah chapter 4, we see that God has given Jonah mercy and given him an opportunity, a second chance, if you will, to go to Nineveh. And he goes to Nineveh. And listen to what verses 1 through 3 of chapter 4 says. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So not only was Jonah mad in the first place, God, Jonah was mad that God gave the people of Nineveh a second chance. And it angered him. And he complained to the Lord about it. Now, I'm not going to look for a show of hands, but I want to know how many people have ever complained to God about stuff. No hands. Don't point to anybody else saying, boy, that's, you're one of those complainers. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. This story is so neat because Jonah gets more than one second chance. The people of Nineveh get more than one second chance. And God gave Jonah mercy. He showed him mercy even when he disagreed with God. I want you to think about the number of times that God has shown you mercy. He's shown you mercy. Because even when we disagree with him, he is willing to to show us mercy. 
And even after God proved himself to be right, and then Jonah bowed up and said, God, I don't like this. I don't like what you're doing. God showed him mercy. I want, you to, I want to read for you from the book of Psalms, 103, verse 8, because it echoes what Jonah just said. It says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. As we've just come out of Thanksgiving, you know what we can be thankful for? If you couldn't find anything else to be thankful for, in the past week, we can be thankful that God's mercy is greater than our sin. Whatever that sin may be. Now, the whole, there's a whole other topic of trying to define what sin is and what isn't because our world has just gone crazy in, in not understanding what sin is and what sin isn't. But when we realize that there is sin in our life, we need to understand that God's mercy is greater than our sin. His unfailing love and mercy comes to our rescue time and time and time again. Time and time again. And if it weren't for His mercy, where would we be? If it weren't for the mercy of God, where would the people of Nineveh be? If it weren't for the mercy of God, where would Jonah be? Well, I got an idea that Jonah would not be part of what we call the Word of God. It would not be part of the 66 books that we call the Word of God. But because of the mercy of God, Jonah received chance after chance after chance, even when he doubted, even when he disobeyed, even when he didn't deserve it, and yes, even when he disagreed with God's plan. I want to remind you, God's plan is not always our plan. His ways are not always our ways, and his thoughts are are not always our thoughts. And it is a very dangerous thing to disagree with God. But thankfully, His mercy covers a multitude of sins. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank You for Your mercy because we thank You that we absolutely deserve one thing, but you give us something else. Because of our sin, because of our sinful nature, we deserve to be separated from you. But because of your mercy, you provided a way for that not to happen. Folks, if you're praying with us this morning, I don't want to scare anybody. I don't want to try to frighten anyone. I just simply want you to know that all of us have sinned. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, fallen short of His standard. And because of that, we, each and every one of us, have been separated from God. But His mercy... The mercy of God says, hold on, wait a minute. A sacrifice has been made. An atoning sacrifice has been made. And that was made when Jesus died on the cross. His mercy has provided a way for us to be reconciled with God. If you have never realized that, if you've never understood what that means, we want today to be the day that you come to the knowledge that Jesus has provided that way. The Bible is very clear when it says 
all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from being separated from God. So if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can find redemption, you can find reconciliation today, this very moment, because of what Jesus did for you. We would encourage you to make that step today. We would love to pray with you and for you. Feel free to email me at Pastor Tim at WestShoreBaptist.org. We'd love to have a conversation with you about that decision. If you are a believer, if you're a follower of Christ, I want to reiterate to you today the mercy that God has given you. The mercy that He has so freely placed upon your life because of what Jesus did. Let us remember that today. Father, we thank you for the mercy that you have given us. That we don't get what we deserve. But instead, your grace gives us what we don't deserve. We thank you for that, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as you can see, we have the lyrics back up and running. We're going to stand together and sing a song that you probably don't need the lyrics for, but they're available for us. Amazing grace, my chains are gone. Pastor Jay.
Let our parting thought for today be God's mercy, we don't get what we deserve. God's amazing grace, we get what we don't deserve. Amen. Corey, come dismiss us, please. Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you again, Lord, for uh, bringing us here to hear this message. Um, as I sat in my pew this today, Lord, I couldn't help but think of how. Jonah and the story of him is, is kind of like a metaphor for each and every one of us this year that, you know, not, I don't know of anyone that's uh, been in a crazy storm and then gotten swallowed by a fish, um, but there's been a lot of circumstances that have been tumultuous, that have been um, scary, that have been just a, a, a metaphorical storm um, and a metaphorical uh, fish that has swallowed each and every one of us, Lord. But as we learn today, you know, um, no matter if we turn away from God, no matter if we disobey God, no matter if we doubt God, your mercy and your love and your salvation can see us through each and every situation that we encounter, Lord. And I just pray, as we prayed earlier, that we use the month of December, this time of Advent, as, as our version of Jonah post-fish. Um, and uh, seek your will, seek your word, and seek the love, mercy, salvation that you provide, and that we not keep that inside, that we share that with others, Lord. There are so many that still need to hear that word, so I just pray for each and every one of us, pray for those that need to hear that, and pray that we have the courage and the boldness to speak out and let folks know about the love, mercy, and salvation that Jesus Christ provides to each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you again for everything that we have, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.